When's the last time you were able to say you owned the F word? Welcome to Fox Talks Business Podcast with your host, Tanya Fox. Tanya has been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, owning retail, service, and franchise. She holds no punches and is never afraid to talk about the nitty gritty. Together, you'll explore the good, the bad, and the motivational of business life, turning obstacles into opportunities and failures into successes. So grab your favorite drink and let's have some fun. Here's your host, speaker, crafter, and collaborator, Tanya Fox. Today's guest is the captivating, extremely intelligent Janisha Alora. From as young as 14 years of age, Janisha had to support herself through school. Through working in a nine to five job and starting many businesses, she had gone through the highs and lows of being a business owner. Her epic journey from being in a six figure debt to making her first million fueled her passion to empower women to do the same. She is a former Miss Singapore and Southeast Asia woman of excellence in 2010. She is the founder of Soul Rich Woman, the number one female network in Southeast Asia that connects more than 200,000 women across the region, with presence in seven countries, including Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia. She is the recipient of the 2019 International Progressive Women Award and the Iconic Influencer of 2019 Award. She has a vision to empower 1 million women. She is so passionate about helping women take their business from offline to attracting clients online, get recognition, and build a brand as a leader and a business owner, and to make a positive impact on the world. She wants every woman to be able to own the F word. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. We're so honored to have you. Well, thank you for having me on your show. So before we get into everything else, I know I ended your your introduction a little bit odd. So can you explain to us what it means to be able to own your F word? Well, it means being fabulous, having freedom and financial independence, and which means women can have it all. In fact, now I have my fourth F, which is family. So being fabulous, having freedom, financial independence and family. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit. Um, we did hear about some of your past in, uh, in your bio and in your introduction, but tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and a little bit about Soul Rich Women. So um, basically, Soul Rich Women help women to go from offline to online, and that's the only one thing that we do. There are different vehicles that help women to do just that. I've developed my own methodology, which is called the Soul Rich Woman Blueprint. And what that means is a magic metaphor of magic wand. So imagine this. Cinderella story, we all know that fairy godmother appeared with a magic wand and waved at Cinderella. And then by 12 midnight, she was supposed to get back from the ball. But imagine this, if the magic wand had been in your own hand, how would your life be different if you had the power in your hands to transform your business and your life? The magic wand comes in three parts, the star, the glow, and the stick right at the bottom. So the star is what we call the woman of influence. How great and how bright are you to attract people to you? The star, the glow, which means it's an irresistible offer. How irresistible or kind of value that you're giving to people that is attracting people to you. And the stick is what we call the magic funnels. How are you monetizing your business so that you can get recurring income every single month? So by having this magic funnel and this whole, um, what we call the magic wand, it helped a lot of the women in Soul Rich Women to really look into their power in their own hands because a man is not a financial plan. Yes, very true. (laughs) And shouldn't be, right? We should be our own financial plan. Yes. (laughs) So 
how can we go about adding value to our audience? Because we hear that so much of people saying it, but I find a lot of entrepreneurs don't really quite know what that means fully. That I have to agree. Um, giving value doesn't mean giving superficial stuff. Give away your best stuff. But there is always this mindset shift that for an entrepreneur that needs to make. Because you need to understand that if you're giving away your best stuff of that one thing that solved that one problem for your one client immediately, you will be able to attract a really huge fish because sell to everybody, sell to nobody, speak to one, speak to many. Right. So if you could give a, a tip on what is one thing that an entrepreneur can do to sort of find that piece of value that they have in their business? Oh, okay. So that's a little bit interesting because different businesses are right. they're different, different. Um, but I would say tell stories by extra extracting it from your own experiences or, you know, kind of have a backstory that gives a reason why you do what you do. From there, you will be able to kind of um, put it together with the products and services. So imagine if there are t uh, like 10 retail outlets of spa, okay, or 10 coaches who's talking about business or confidence, then you will need to differentiate yourself, right? Is it your dressing? Is it your personality? And ultimately, we want to focus on the message of that product. It's never about the product and services. So it's always about the story, the message, um, what exactly you are helping them. Just like so rich women, we only help women to go from offline to online. That one thing. And right. we are very focused on like talking about like getting clients online, getting their voices heard, getting recognition, being seen. And because of this messaging, we have, although we have different vehicles, but we give value around these few pieces, right? So find your key pillars or your key messages that allows you to develop content around these pieces and give away your best stuff. And I'm not saying that giving away everything, like your whole program or stuff like that. I would say that at least one part of it, if they could, you could engage your audience in small agreements consistently i mean if they are yes 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 all the way that means get, get customers will trust you more and therefore being able to have uh, be able to make a bigger uh, purchase right so this leads me to explaining the value ladder when you have a value ladder of incremental small agreements with the customer it allows them to continuously be able to absorb your greatness and absorb your value at different points so for example you have a low hanging fruit of seven dollars and then you have not product at 25 dollars and then the next product could be five thousand dollars and then the next product could be twenty five thousand dollars so even for us in so rich women like we have um our membership that is only twelve dollars a month and then after that, you progress to a clarity call or a digital product. And then you progress to a two-day workshop at $2,000. And then you go to the next level, which is the, uh, the our, uh, we have our two programs. One track is Instant Podcast Leader. We talk about um, how you can do your podcast in just 24 hours. And then the other one is how can you get a book out in just um, 30 days, right? And then you go up to the next level, which is the coaching and mentorship, which is about $40,000. And then mastermind is about 50 to 100K, depending on which level you're at. And then that's how we progressed. So when you are able to get your customers to give you small agreements, this is when your power is really in your hands. And I think that's true too, because I think a lot of people, especially these days, think really, really big. Like if I can just get three clients that pay me, you know, $10,000, then I don't have to do anything. But they, they really don't see, like you said, they see the, don't see the value of those ones that can kind of grow with you as their, you know, as their business grows and their trust grows with you. So that when you do approach them with that bigger ticket item, they're like, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I, I totally agree with you. The, there's a lot of entrepreneurs these days who are really impatient. They just, they've seen successful entrepreneurs doing like millions of dollars and they're like, no, I want to be there like today. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Like they just started their business today and they want the results like yesterday. 
you know? Yeah. So I, I think that's unrealistic. You really have to work your brand, your, your, your woman of influence or your a person of influence and then the star, which means building that, that trust and relationship. I think having patience is one. Number two, there's no such thing as instant success. I mean, even for me, I had to work when I was 14 years old and all this culminated to where I am today. And because I had retail experience, um, built a cafe retail chain in three countries, I had 18 franchises and licenses. I was in charge of the Indonesian market. I was able to put all these experiences into Soul Rich Women. So how, they, how has got retail got to do with online, right? But hey, because of that, I was able to relate to retail business owners and being able to structure the framework to work even with retail businesses. And I think that's it. We tend to think we don't, uh, we don't open our minds enough to re, you know, recall those past experiences to be able to see, like you said, even though you were dealing primarily with retail, you were able to see the gifts and the skills that you got from that and how you can transpose it to what you're doing now. So tell us a little bit about um, some of the obstacles that you've had, because now you're in in a different market. I'm in Canada and you're not. So (laughs) I'm trying not to give too much away, but I know you've had some (laughs) some struggles with, with where you are. So can you tell us a little bit about that story? Wow. I've got quite a lot of struggles. Which one would you like to listen to? (laughs) (laughs) I think there's so many that people can learn from, right? Because they see people and then they think, oh, it's so easy for them, but they don't realize that, you know, everybody has struggles. Everybody has failures. They're just a different scale, you know? Yeah, so I have a, multi- a couple of pieces I would, I would like to say. I think the, the reason why first I started Soul Rich Woman, I think that um, when you call a, a, a brand, when you build a brand, you know, sometimes people have always different things to say about it. You know, why do you do this and, and that? But that, that struggle was overcome because my mother is like my pillar of strength and support. So she kind of gave me that understanding and notion of the big why is always um, bigger than the how. So whatever that I'm doing and whatever obstacles I'm doing, I'm always uh, going through. I'm, I'm always looking at my big why. I don't care what happens. Okay, I'm like, okay, this is my big why. I'm just going to do it, you know. I think the, the failed partnership was one piece that um, is important because I was young and naive and, you know, we have friends starting a business together. We didn't sign a contract. You know, we're just like, oh, you know, we are good friends. Come, let's come together and start a dating agency. And I came up with the money and the two of them, Say, okay, yeah, we will do the, the actual thing. So I actually paid money for their um, certifications because here in Singapore, you have to have a certificate to be a dating coach. So I sent them for the dating um, coach certificates and guess what? They finished the certification and then that's it. And then they didn't really um, do anything. And I specifically said that um, I, I just wanted to invest in a business. And because I had to run my other business, which was, the, which was the image consultancy business back then. And I said, why don't you just do that so I can focus on my other business? Um, and I put in money into it and I lost quite a lot of money. And in the end, lesson learned, which is number one, don't just... Talks. You think that your friend are your best partners? That's bullshit. <laughs> okay. Number two, it's really you really have to do black and white. Regardless, it's your friend, your family member. You know, you really have to put it down. Of course, they say, oh, you know, we've known, known each other for ten years, but you know, your val- your perspective about money is very different. And um, business is like when people. How do I how do I put this in perspective for for your for you, which means that if you have peop, your 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 pressure about money, let's say if the the bank the money is like going down the the going down and and what kind of how will you respond to that incident or situation at that point? And then also I've seen situations where you know the partners they just just want to be the boss but they don't want to do anything but sub and that's subconscious you know. They, they, they just want to take the money, the salary as a startup, but they don't want to do anything about it. So I think so black and white is very important. Don't assume that friends are your best partners. Um, number two, really get to, don't even start a company yet, but rather just um, do some simple like agreement and then to kickstart first until you make a profit of maybe like 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Like you can even make your first dollar together 
then you go ahead to the next part, which is your setting up a company. Then by then, it's fair to say that, is it okay that the profit that we make, that the $10,000, that we invest half into or all into the business, and then we kind of put like a, a percentage of equity, 50, 50%. So I think that's very important. And that is why I had, um, I gave myself a second chance because I mean, the money is not a lot, but it's still, it's still painful and I could have limited myself. So my cafe retail chain, we had four other partners and we worked together seamlessly because we respected each other's roles. I was PR and marketing. My partner was franchise. The other one was doing operations. The other one was doing design and artwork. So when all of us came together, it was like the Avengers, you know, <laughs> powers combined, you know, and, and it worked. We, so we started like one outlet, two outlets, three outlets, and we were just grew. So although we quarrel and we fight, okay, but there must be always a leader in the business. No two partners are equal, although you can hear and discuss, but there must be always a driver in the business because it, it, it will come to a point where when there are two Indian chiefs, it's, it's when and both are split on a certain decisions, then it may affect the business as well. So you're going to look into that. And I think that's so true what you said. And I see this too, um, you know, in, in, in my work with different businesses, even with employees, is that we forget to look at what everybody's strength is that is feeding whatever, whether it's them working for you or being a partner with you, we really have to, you know, focus on what is everybody's strength and what are they bringing, you know, what can they bring to the, to the table? And I, I think that's important. And I know myself too have done, have had that mistake. I've hired family before and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's always a headache. You know, I've had moms calling me and saying, you know, oh, my daughter's not coming to work today. And I'm like, no, that's not how this works. <laughs> you know? so it's yeah. Like I don't, I don't hire family anymore like, <laughs> at all, unless there's a huge contract there, because it's true. You, you have to, you have to protect yourself. And I don't think it's, you know, it's necessarily bad to say we need to put this in place so we know where everybody stands especially the bigger you get i find you need to have those you know to protect everybody not just you but them as well yeah definitely and because we were able to like kind of support each other we were clear on our roles and i was in charge of the indonesia market and another partner was doing the malaysia one and one was doing the singapore one and because of that uh, we had an overall ceo which is another partner of ours. So, I mean, I'm okay being not the leader, you know, because he has to come up with the most money in an equity. <laughs> <laughs> but still, we do our part and we successfully exited to a public listed company. So, uh, you, you see, the, even you, do you know how the public listed company owner found us? We were at the exhibition and he could see there was teamwork in, in the, during the exhibition and during the franchise exhibition. Because when you do franchising, you have to put up the booth, you have to explain to people, right? So at the exhibition, he came by, he was, under, he was like not eye-catching at all. He was just normally dressed and he has been observing us for quite a long time and always seeing the same few faces like we we are bosses we are we are rolling up our sleeves you're doing the things you know explaining and and eventually he he walked over and he introduced himself so that's how we got bought over <laughs> and that's true right like that i find that some of my my biggest contracts or my biggest relationships, my biggest business has been from the most unlikely of places. And I think, I think it's, it's so key to, to keep yourself open to those experiences because you never know, you never know, like, you know, like you said, you never know if that, you know, normally dressed guy all of a sudden comes and just gives you the, the, the wand that you needed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, uh, it, they, they kind of, you make the, the star really bright. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's a good thing. And like you said, too, I think deciding what role is that you want to play in a business, especially with partnerships, is really, really key because sometimes you don't want to be that one at the top because there's a lot to do up there. Like, I hear it all the time. People, you know, say, oh, it must be so nice to, you know, be the CEO or be the CFO and make all that money. And I'm like, 
I don't think you understand what goes along with that. Like, you know, they're not just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, for just for watching sure. the the money roll in, like. <laughs> You know, when there is power, there is responsibility. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why that was such a, a, a big line in that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's true. Like, you know, and I agree with what you said too about the overnight success. I think that is the biggest myth um, that new entrepreneurs and new business owners fall into is thinking, I'm just going to start this and it's going to be super successful because this person was, and it's like, yeah, but you didn't see, like you said, you didn't see, you know, the 10, 20 years that I worked before this to get to this place. Like you're just seeing me now, but there was a yeah. lot of blood, sweat and tears that went into this. <laughs> yeah, totally agreed. So tell us a little bit more about some stuff that you have coming up that, that you're working on. Oh, um, so we have launched a podcast, like kind of a network, helping women to get started because here in Southeast Asia, not many women are doing podcasting. And while um, Google, Alexa, you know, voice marketing is on the rise, um, we want to equip women with the capability and ability to use voice to do their marketing and be searchable so that but while brand building is important and videos are important, but Southeast Asia, actually, um, a lot of the, I'm not sure about Canada but here we have been asking women to do videos for the longest time but we face so much uphill um, efforts getting women to get onto videos the percentage of women doing videos is so little except those that you see them selling clothes and selling stuff you know right and 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 that's really terrible so when I spotted the trend of um, voice and podcasting for the Southeast Asian or Asian women, um, that really, really like, like boom town very fast. Like all the women who didn't want to show their faces or were ready to just let their voices be heard, be, be seen, I mean, kind of like be seen on different um, podcasting platforms. So that was really good. So overall this year is about getting the voices heard and shine. So that's our main initiative this year. And we are truly blessed to continuously find ways to get women to go from offline to online because alone you are strong. Together we are unstoppable. Oh, I love that. And it's true. What do you hear most um, like on your feedback from the women, like of why they are maybe a little trepidatious to go out like on video or stuff like that? Oh, um, they, they just said, I'm too ugly. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I, I, I'm not beauty queen, Janisha. I'm not, I'm not like you, you know? So it's all, I always have to face monsters like these and reason because, you know, there are quite a few objections because being in this space for the last five years, um, today, this is my sixth year actually, um, in women empowerment, but focusing on going offline to online is that women have a couple of key objections. Janisha is single for now. I mean, I'm dating, but it's not like married. Okay? Yeah. Janisha doesn't have kids. You know, Janisha will not understand. Da, 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 da. But you know what I told them? I said, hey, I, I may not be married. I may not have kids, but so what? This platform is not about me. This is my legacy business. It's about you what it can do for you. Does the result, is the result relevant to whether it's married or you're not married? So by doing that in the last five years, six years, we work very hard to produce a lot of results. So we have like, now we have like mom who has stayed at home for 10 years and she made it in two months, making four figures every single month like that. Every day, she's just looking at PayPal notifications coming in and she's like, woohoo, you know. And we've got a mother of three teenagers making it as well, you know, from nobody really knows her. She's a professional makeup artist to people know her and pay her. And she became a celebrity makeup artist in just, what, five, six months because of the PR network that we have to help her to shine. We have another lady who is an employee turned entrepreneur. She was working in a six-figure income job but quit her job to come out to do a business after when her income is now like six figures as well, fully automated. So when at first earlier stage, she wanted to come out, but we didn't advise her to come out because it's important that you, you make somewhat similar of an income before you come out, right. but it's, 
but but it's by using that magic wand, that ability to automate the business just like that. Um, it allowed her to freedom to just jump out of the business because she's now working because she loves and choose to work. Yeah. While that business is already automated, right? Yeah, but, and she runs a fitness studio. And we've got another business owner who runs an F&B business. So it's a retail business. And she wanted to get more business online. And running ads was like, she was, make, she was spending like $10,000 a, a month. But the, the leads are just so expensive. So we had to devise a strategy called brand affinity, which means that you really, really get customers engaged or uh, uh, how do I say this? Like even they before you come before they become your customers, they are already like have some stickiness with your brand. Right. And when they do a brand recall, you are the one they can go to. So it's all these things that we set up and the examples that we've produced over the last five years. So many of them, hundreds and hundreds of them, that allowed that breaking of the limiting belief when they see me sometimes and realizing that the platform is no longer about me, it's just about them. Then that is why when a woman changes her life, her entire community benefits. And I think that's so true. We hear it, like, I know even over here in Canada, we, we get that so much. Like, who am I? I'm, you know, I'm just a, a house mom or I'm just, you know, and I said, but you're the one who can run a business like so easy because you've run an entire household. So you've dealt with financing, you've dealt with, conflict you've dealt with resolution like you have all of these skills that people pay you know thousands of dollars to try to get and you have it because you've had to deal with it you know and you know just getting them you know i think that's wonderful that you're helping these women to you know to realize that their skills are valuable and people do want to hear what they have to say that's been one of my biggest things i think that everybody has such interesting stories and we need to get back to that place where we start sharing our stories again and passing on those traditions and those knowledges down especially among women cuz i feel like we've sort of stopped a little bit of sharing you know what we've gone through but I also want to add um, is that I agree with what you said. And a lot of women, I feel that it's mindset. They are just mm. using, you know, the, the blame game without yeah. knowing. They're like, oh, because of you, so I, I can't do it. You know? and, and they always like to put it, um, it's a habitual thing because they are not awakened. They, they, they have not awakened or transformed in their own mind. So, so it becomes like this, um, yeah, she, she can do it, but I can't. You know, there's this comparison, number one. There's this competition, number two. And there's this like, will she help me? You mean she will help me? This woman, the woman thing that is skepticism, like, will she really help me? So yeah. the, these are the three main things that I, I felt uh, I felt it when I did the platform when I first started. It's like, are you sure Janisha will help us? Are you sure Soul Rich Woman will help us? It's like, woman, eh, you know, you're a woman. And, and it's like, what? Yeah. What do you mean by woman cannot help a woman? But because traditionally and culturally, women are not seen in marketplaces where we are supporting other people. The whole empowerment thing only started really about two years ago. And, and yeah. that to educate for me, five years ago, six years ago, to educate women on that was like really uphill task. But I would say because of, like I said, you really have to get your influence out there and giving value consistently. And when they, some of them will be convinced and some of them will still not be convinced. And whatever the case is, every, you can't please everybody and we can't help everybody. And the, the world, the sea is our, is, is the, the abundance, right? So... Everybody will have, we all each have our own kind of like a pie. Imagine if there's an ocean and there are so many types of fishes inside. Just dolphins alone, there are different types of dolphins. Just sharks alone, there are different types of sharks. Just whales alone, there are different types of whales, right? And then there is like octopus, your squid, your palm fruit, and whatever fishes that's in the ocean. There's so many of them. Although we can't make a dolphin become a shark, a black tip shark become a whale, but we can, we can speak to that one black tip shark and say, speak to one, speak to many, and I will have the ocean of abundance of the black tip shark, right? And whether it's the Indiana Ocean or the South Atlantic or whatever ocean that may be, 
you know, you have your own path. You just have to believe and open up the mindset of that whole competition and the comparison, the jealousy and the skepticism of why people will help you. You know what? You really have to work on your mindset. And there will be two books I really highly recommend you to read. I think one is, uh, I think this is not very widely known, but other than Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Kim, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, you should read yep. the wife's book, Rich Woman by Kim Kiyosaki. I met her in person and I interviewed her and I spoke on the same stage as her. She's phenomenal. You know, her energy, her, she's the cash flow queen. She's like power in her hands and wow, I'm like so blown away. So don't think that the power is not in your hands. You should go check out Rich Woman by Kim Kiyosaki. The second okay. book I highly recommend you to read is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Even though it's a very old, old book, but I really think that Louise Hay's book really helped me to see, um, like kind of like started my awakening at a very young age when I was looking for answers. And then only when I won Miss Singapore in 2006, because... That, that was then when the doors opened. I think I manifested that as well. The, the sponsors actually introduced me to transformational courses that allowed me as a Miss Singapore to go through healing. And that's when I was able to be a very different person. And that was when I started my kind of like a spiritual awakening kind of thing. I started on my journey. So the F word in totality, why I talk about fabulous freedom, financial independence and family because it's never just about the business. You know, it's never just about being rich. You, have, you can have all the money in the world, the, the wealth, you know, but if you don't even have a soul, yeah. what good will that do to the world? Yeah. Well, and I have said for years, money doesn't bring happiness. And I've totally believed that statement because I think it's true. I've met, you know, I've met people, I've had clients that, you know, were multimillionaires and miserable, like hated everything about their lives. And then I met people that, you know, lived paycheck to paycheck who had an abundance of joy and love for the world. And that really, you know, was one of the things that opened my eyes. And I actually have read the You Can Heal Your Life one. And I do think it is a classic book. I don't think it's an old, I think it's a classic. And it'll, I think that one stands the test of time. So... Yeah, and and then there's one more is um, I didn't get to meet the lady, but I think Mary Miriam Williamson, I, I can't remember her name, but she uh, she had this DVD on a uh, video that's called the Shadow Effect. Oh, okay. Yeah. So shadow when I was effect. doing the the Shadow Effect, when I was doing image consultancy, I meet a lot of women. Um, like in those days where I was guiding these women to be successful and I realized they have a lot of baggages and like um, things. So I, I actually gave them the DVDs of these two, You Can Heal Your Life, Shadow Effect, and then plus um, Kim Kiyosaki's book. <laughs> so it's like one complete set. You know, if you're my client, you get these three things, you know? Yeah. The, yeah, the shadow effect. Yeah, because the shadow effect deals with, their, they will see that there's a lot of delusions and illusions in your mind. And then you can heal a life to explain your pain and things why you're experiencing, you know, certain parts of your journey and self-love. And then, you know, um, Kim Kiyosaki talks about breaking free and really owning yourself. <laughs> So it's like a progression stuff. Yeah. So they work perfect together. That's great. Well, thank you so yeah. much for those recommendations. That's awesome. So if people are interested in learning more about Soul Rich Women and working with you, where can they go to find all of the information about you? First, connect with me on social media. I would love to hear what you, your thoughts were about this episode and how it has impacted you uh, at Genesha Alora. So just search G-E-N-E-C-I-A. A L L U O R A. And I've got, got two downloadables for you. So, one is how do you delegate 80% of your to do list so that you can focus on your zone of genius and make more money? And the other one is how do you do your personal brand in order to become a millionaire? Okay, so go grab these two on the Soul Rich Woman website at S O U L R I C H W O M A N.com.
That's awesome. Thank you. I'm sure people are going to love them. And we're going to have all of the links of where that they can find you on our blog and our social media. So it'll just be a quick click so you guys can all learn more about them. So thank you again so much for coming on and congratulations for your two awards that you got in 2019 as well. Very, oh. very well deserved. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I, re I wasn't really expecting that, but uh, I think when, when, when you do your work, not expecting anything and giving value like crazy <laughs> people, people will see that yeah yeah and it always makes it that much more sweet of an award when you're not expecting it I find yeah it was really not expected <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well thank you and we look forward to um continuing to follow soul witch women and all of the stuff that you do and hope to have you back on the show again um sometime soon yeah do remember to continuously step out of your comfort zone and go towards the dreams you've always wanted to achieve one of my favorite things about technology today is that if you would have told me when I started my career over 20 years ago that I would be able to sit in my studio and interview somebody in Singapore, I wouldn't have thought that would be something that I would be doing. But I'm so grateful because I've been able to meet and connect with so many different people from around the world, not only to learn about their culture, but about their business culture as well. And it just has given me so much amazing information. Before any of my guests come on the show, I have a little questionnaire that I get them to fill out. And one of my favorite questions to get an answer to is what is one of the most memorable pieces of advice you received? And I find I can learn so much about a person and their beliefs through this question. And Janisa said that alone we are strong, together we are unstoppable. And I really know that that has hit home with her because through following her, I really know that one of her biggest passions is helping other people to rise up to their full potential. And she talked about that a lot um, with me beforehand, but I really do see that that is something that she truly believes in. And it's something that I believe in because I find that when we help others, we just you know, as a byproduct, help ourselves, whether that's through learning or whether that's just through the feeling of connection with people. If you want to find out more about Janisha and how you can follow her as well as her podcast and all of the stuff that she does on social media, head over to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca. Just click on blog at the top of the page and you'll be able to see the post for this episode. Just click on it and you'll be able to have all of the quick links that you'll be able to follow her on whatever your favorite avenue is. And if you're struggling with something, if you have an obstacle going into this new decade that you just aren't quite too sure how you're going to get over, I want to know about it. So please send me a message in whatever avenue is best for you and let me know what is it that kind of has you scratching your head and let's find a solution together. And no matter what you're doing, you guys all know my tagline by now. Say it with me. Make sure that you're having fun because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?